This is Twit. So last week I went to New York for an HP event that was largely about AI. Well, it was literally all, all about AI, but AI across their stack as they see it. And of course, HP, HP is a company that serves both consumers and commercial customers. And in addition to, you know, the computers and printers and things that we know them for, they're, they're also starting to sell a lot of services and do different things. And so um, they, they've jumped into this AI PC era with two feet. Um, they've rebranded all their computers, starting with those Copilot Plus PCs. And then as new computers come out, we'll see those like that. HP, you've got in front of you, is an HP Elite Book 1040. If like off the top of my head, I believe that thing would be called an HP Elite Book X. I think is the term, or, or Ultra. No, I guess X, and then um, ten, every, like ten. Every time X, we 10. mock Microsoft for naming stuff, I look at PC <laughs> names. Like, yeah. Well, you know, their their name their new naming strategy makes sense, but there's all these little caveats to it. It's like. Um, if it's an X360 style computer, they used, to, they used to use that term. Those will be called flip now. So it's like HP Elite Book X flip. Okay. <laughs> so we'll be the next version of that thing, but whatever. Um, that will be a problem for a new day. So the thing I was most interested in was they announced a new AI PC based on a next gen AMD chip that they would not disclose the day I was there. Um, and then Monday came and we now know that it is one of the upcoming AMD chips and AMD has now released some more information about this, but they, they announced new generation mobile and desktop chips back at Computex in June. Um, this is based on their new Zen five, uh, processor technology, you know, like we see it at the Intel side, hybrid, uh, big MPUs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, more efficient. Um, so we know more details about that stuff. The HP uh, is just, is a laptop, again, to me, a little confusingly named because they're, they, they're just released. Um, Copilot plus PC is called, let me see if I get this right. And HP Omnibook, I think, is it X? I don't even remember. I'm sorry, I can't, these names are terrible. Um, and But this is going to be an, an HP Omnibook Ultra. Um, so, it's running this AMD, uh, what's it called? What is the actual name of this chip? It is called a Ryzen AI 300 series. There are two of them, uh, two different of the Ryzen's that is for mobile uh, computers. They're claiming 20, 20 hours of battery life, asterisks, really 13 hours of battery life, oh. um, 50 or 55 tops MPU, depending wow. on the US. That's a lot of tops. Um, yeah. I don't know if tops are like exponential as you go up, like it's the like Richter scale or something, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I am. Um, no one has. I know. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I yeah. know enough about numbers to know 50 or 55 is bigger than 45. So, mm -hmm. uh, definitely better. Um, but not, but not considered a copilot plus PC. So, well, see, this is part of the, the, the interesting thing about this is it verified what I had reported back in June, which was because I, at the time I went back and looked at very carefully at what everyone said about this, because we all knew next gen Intel AMD chips were coming. Yep. And the, the assumption was that these things would be called called Pilot Plus PCs. And we actually don't know that, uh, but we do know they will not be called that at launch because, as we've been saying, there is this exclusivity window. We just don't know when it ends. Right. So when this thing launches in August, it will not be called a Copilot Plus PC, but it will get those Copilot Plus PC features at a later date when Microsoft ships a free update, which we know is Windows 11 24H2. So that probably means it will happen in October, but I would say maybe the to be safe October at the earliest because you know it could come via a cumulative update later. Um, the question is at that time, does that thing become a Copilot Plus PC? Does that even matter? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Nobody's saying so. I would think so, but you know whatever. You I, know, in like, October six months since build when they announced all that stuff. So that yep. seems like a reasonable window. Six months. Yeah. Yeah. We also, you know, um, this <laughs> in my, my little world, my sad little world, um, there are, you know, people that just kind of hate everything, you know, mm -hmm. and they're, uh, they especially hate anything new. And, uh, they've just been, they, they hate AI. Uh, they can't stand Copilot plus PC. They don't believe in Snapdragon X at all, you know? So this kind of thing gets announced and they're like, so let me get this straight. This thing's going to get 20 hours of battery life. It's an X64 chip. So it's going to run everything natively. 
uh, it's it's got a faster MPU than a Copilot Plus PC. So what is the point of Snapdragon X again? And to answer that question, I would uh, point you to the uh, the photograph of the side of this laptop because if you look at it from the side, you will see that the it's, AMD based three computer feet tall. is about twice as thick yeah. <laughs> as the Snapdragon X. Um, it's going to have a lot of um, active cooling. It's going to be louder. There's going to be a lot more fan noise. Um, so, you know, the point, uh, as such as it is, is, you know, thin light, it's that always, well, we don't have always connectivity anymore, but it's that, that the original promise of Windows and ARM, which is just the, uh, the longevity plus thin and light, and hopefully one day, no, no um, fans, although in my experience with these computers, the uh, fans are not actually an issue at all. Right. But, so anyway, know, it's great to have a fan in case you need the performance that it needs to cool itself. Yeah, but yeah, as long fair. as that fan mo on usual use never spins, never makes a sound. I, I know this isn't technically true. Uh, I know that if you, I don't know, re-rendered a 4K video for two and a half hours or something that it would throttle. But I will tell you, there is something magical going on with the MacBook Air, which is just passively cooled. It's just a base yeah. M3. It is unbelievably good performance 15 hours of battery life wow we're really getting to you aren't we <laughs> yeah, yeah well it's just but it runs mac os oh. my, no my it's no no there is no it's not it's just the truth like it's amazing mm -hmm. and yeah. i don't know exactly what combination of hardware software makes that a reality but i think owning the is, whole stack makes a big difference god it's know? it's it is a, sure. yeah it's amazing although i guess so, you could say in some ways microsoft owns the whole surface stack Although it doesn't yeah, make the processors, ways, right? They don't make the processors. Right. Yeah. They don't make the. I mean, Apple literally can GPUs. tune its processors to yeah, that's right. op be optimized for the hardware and the operating yeah. system. Well, they integrated yeah. everything no, I mean, into I, one chip in the first place. Right. There's a you know you pay a little bit with your soul. Um, yeah. You know you have to use <laughs> Mac OS, which is terrible. Aww. But <laughs> for you have to no, live but, in it, the but no, but that trade but, is you live in the walled garden. <laughs> it, right. And look, some people embrace that, you know, just like mm -hmm. some people embrace uh, Jonestown and Kool Aid. But mm -hmm. it's it's you know, there's good there's good and bad to my to my opinion. But um, I, you can't argue with the uptime and the performance. It's just mm -hmm. incredible. It just is. And I don't think we're ever going to see that in a Windows PC. I just don't. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Not that combination. Um, but Snapdragon X guess is pretty close. And then. Um, you know, it was, well, I guess it was Thursday when this event occurred. Um, they were being very coy about the chip and would not discuss this. So Monday came, or, you know, maybe a day or a couple of days before they finally, they sent some information out. But Monday, AMD started putting out more information about these chips. And I'm not a hardware guy, but I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the different approaches that AMD and Intel are taking to try to kind of hybridize their x64 chips now you know the, to make them more like arm uh is very very interesting and um the, again i it's not my area i'm probably going to misspeak here but uh, i do know from re reviewing laptops for many years that if you think about just something like intel just to keep it simple um they would typically have like these 15 watt u series chips that would go into thin and light computers right mm -hmm. sometimes they would have a seven or nine watt variant that would be for like tablets and really 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 thin things um, they would have like an H series and K series, different series, you know, but H series would be like the high performance version. And then, uh, for the 12th and 13th gen, they had a P series that sat in the middle. So the H series were 56 watt parts. The P series 28 Watts and AMD has done the same thing until this generation of chips. So I mentioned that there are only two versions of the mobile versions of the processors. There's also desktop versions. Um, they both can scale from a TDP, a TDP perspective. They can, uh, it is up to the PC maker to configure it for, to run at 15 Watts, 28 Watts, or whatever the figure is, 56 Watts. They can run up to whatever number they don't, they're not going to sell a lot of different chips. They're just going to sell two and they're, they're scalable from a kind of power consumption, power output perspective. Um, and it's, and it just depends on how you use them. So Different way of doing things. Very interesting. Um, the other thing I, I, I just kind of point to, because I don't think anyone ever really thinks about this stuff, but a year ago this summer, HP released something called the Dragonfly Pro in uh, Windows PC and uh, Chromebook variants. The Chromebook is now a Chromebook Plus because it meets the, that specification, sort of like the Copilot Plus PC thing. But the, 
the Windows version had an, a special AMD chipset at the time, and AMD and my and uh, HP worked together to subvert the power management capabilities in Windows and do their own thing. And so this this chip, you know, their approach was we don't have performance cores and efficiency cores. We have cores; they can scale up and down. You can turn some of them off. So there are there are times when the PC is not doing too much, where this thing runs at a very low power consumption because only a couple of the cores are on. Um, it was good for leaving it on overnight and are sleeping overnight and it wouldn't drain the battery, but it could fire up cores as it needed. Um, but for this to work properly, they couldn't use the power management in windows. Mm. So they completely redid that. And, and HP has done a lot of that type of stuff since then. They, it, they're doing it in Intel based machines too. In fact, Leo, that computer you have has an updated version of the system that I'm talking about. This kind of smart sense, whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah. 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 It's cool. And, um, it, yeah, and it's, it it's very battery interesting life as a result, by the way. Yeah, and and Meteor Lake, uh, in my experience, has been garbage. In fact, Meteor Lake on this exact computer, but without that software, was garbage. I experienced that with the uh, ZBook Firefly G11, I think was the thing, but it's almost exactly the same computer, but they it didn't have any of that stuff I just described, plus it had a, a DGPU too. But um, so, yeah, this is, you know, PC makers are starting to work around this stuff. But the reason I mention this is because a year ago, HP, because I asked, I was like, excuse me, it's like I have a question. Uh, you must talk to Microsoft, right? I mean, and they said, yeah, said, we can't really talk about this too much, but um, Microsoft is aware this is a problem. They know this stuff has to be extensible. They know they have to let us get in there and, and be able to make these changes. Chipset makers like Intel, AMD, and you know Qualcomm now want to make these changes too. They want their systems to work as well as they can work, right? So um, my, I, my assumption was, by this point, we would have seen this occur in Windows, and there has been nothing on that front, mm. like zero. Um, and I don't think we're going to see it in 24H2, right, even though there's updates coming, et cetera, et cetera. But um, this is still something that kind of needs to happen. And, and you know, you mentioned uh, Apple and only the whole stack. And, you know, one of the advantages they have is when they have this kind of a problem and they want to solve it, it's they, they own the whole thing. They can change. They change the Mac. They don't change. You know, they don't have to subvert anything. It's theirs. Right. So this is an issue. Um, you know, this is the other side of the sword. We have all this choice. We have all these different designs. We have different uh, companies making different kinds of products. And uh, they're running into these walls. And because they don't own the whole stack like Apple does, they have to do that kind of stuff. So I suspect, in fact, I'm positive on this, this new AI PC. I'm sure it's doing some kind of power management, power, you know, um, shenanigans, I'll call it, hmm. um, you know, to achieve whatever level of battery life it will get. So we'll see. Anyway. And actually, I mean, spec-wise, yeah. it sounds like it's superior to the Copilot Plus PCs. Spec-wise. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I it's, look. Is uh, it much more uh, expensive? Copilot Plus. Because no. That actually, Yoga Slim not. you have is like 1300 bucks. It's not. It's a bargain. Yeah. 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 Um, no, this this is going to start at about 1450 oh, okay. for which by the way, for, well, it's a consumer, it's like a prosumer device. I mean, their elite books are started about this price. Um, so it's a, it's not quite 500 bucks more than the cheapest uh, Copilot plus PC, but it's also a slightly different kind of computer, even though it's, you know, it's an AI PC, obviously it's a laptop, but it's not a thin and light, you know, it, this thing has it's a uh, workstation. I, not, well, I don't know what to call it. So AMD Radeon 800 M graphics are depending on who you ask. Um, you know, they're embedded. They're what they used to call like an AP. Remember they're, are they discrete graphics? Are they, you know, it, it's, they're kind of, you know, everything's changing a little bit. Um, I will say, I don't, I, I don't not used it to this capacity and I'm, it's not aimed at this market, but I suspect you could throw a, a modern game on there. It would run really well, right? Like these are, these are powerful creator class computers. Maybe it would be the way to say it. So we'll see. I, I'm, I, I wish there was more AMD out in the world and um, less Intel. So, do you think that uh, you know there's always that big red versus big blue thing? Is, is, do you think AMD's mm -hmm. processors are superior or just a good low cost, lower cost alternative? I think they might be both. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Because when you when you say superior, you know, you get a, that means a lot of different things. But it's I think true. That, I mean, bang I think, for the buck is one way of talking about superior but, but right? also just how about just basic reliability right, right. or 
um, you know, uh, they, I don't know what you call this, but I, every day I still do this. Every one of these computers, every morning I get up and I open the lid and they all come on and I'm like, this is the best. This never happens. Well, I should say never, but it, very rare in the X64 world for that to be the case without, you know, hibernation and, and, you know, slow boot ups and all that kind of stuff. So, um, Intel, uh, I've had, I've, I've expressed the issues I've had with Intel chips over the previous two generations, including the current gen. Um, I think Meteor Lake is a major step back when it comes to uh, reliability. We're starting to see, uh, and battery life, and we're starting to see reports from others who have been complaining about 12th and 13th gen, the previous two gens as well. I think Intel belatedly got the message on what the way the world was going. It was telegraphed 20 years ago, but whatever. And they're racing to catch up. And in the race to catch up, I think they're making mistakes and um, they're breaking things. And I am very leery of their latest gen chipset. Hmm. Um, I And it's it's an orphan. It's their, The next one is going to be nothing like it. So this thing's just going to kind of sit out there alone. You know, I don't, I don't, I I don't see a good future for for these computers. So, uh, you know, we'll see. Is AMD any better? The truth is, I just don't see AMD enough out with uh, the reviews right. that I do. I mean, to from, have a good opinion from an about it. IT perspective, when we were looking at it from servers, they they tended to have more cores per dollar, but they were simpler cores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, which is the ARM much. approach, That's right? In too. a way, yeah, yeah. It was sort of in, but it was it straddled the two lines. The, I, um, the sneaky part was when Microsoft started licensing by core, suddenly AMD-based servers became much more expensive than Intel-based servers. <laughs> right. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's funny. Uh, Microsoft licensing. Um, yes. Very funny. So AMD, I mentioned the AMD uh, chip that's in the Dragonfly Pro. You guys can go look this up and see what this thing is but um, and how it works differently than mainstream x64 chips did at the time and you know maybe that's becoming more common now but amd's approach to the arm challenge is different from intel's and so i think we're going to have an interesting um battle and some good conversations we'll you know lots and lots of people are going to review these computers and we'll see you know we'll see what happens hey it's me leo laporte i hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from windows weekly if you want to see more and want to catch the whole show you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website twit.tv slash ww and of course there's links right below me